Coop and Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. <coughs> On the phone, delighted to be joined by Mr. Frank Warren. Frank, how are you keeping? I'm good, Coop. How are you? Yeah, just probably the same as everyone else, Frank. Just trying to keep uh, keep your time occupied and... Yeah, it's boring pretty much, isn't it? But It is, but you've got to stay healthy. Absolutely. Frank, what have you actually been doing? Obviously, you're quite active in your day-to-day, normal day-to-day life, but what have you been doing? Uh, what have I been doing? I've been uh, walking, lots of walking uh, in the gym, and I've been catching up on uh, on some uh, series that I've been watching on TV and watching some old ones, reading, listening to a bit of music, uh, having a casual glass of wine. I don't blame you, Frank. I don't blame you. Um yeah, Frank, I just obviously obviously we'll talk about kind of what's going on at the minute, but I saw some news um recently that the Fury Wilder three fight could be now pushed to October. Can you tell us anything about that? Not really. I mean, you know, at the moment it's just trying to find I think, you know, it's it's so difficult to say anything about dates. <clears throat> Every country's on a got a different thing happening, you know, in the States. Um it seems to be starting to get to, you know, hitting them big time and uh, moving around the country, the virus. Uh, obviously, all the commissions at the moment have stopped uh, in the key states have stopped boxing, said it won't be allowed in the foreseeable future. Vegas is down completely. The, people, the casinos are not operating, the hotels are not. They've laid staff on. So until all those things are up and running, it's going to be difficult to talk about what's going to happen in the States. And the fight's contracted to take place, but I'm certain it'll take place sometime in the uh, in in um, in the autumn. That's what what the aims for. But I don't know about the exact date, to be honest. Mm. How does this leave? Kind of obviously, you know, you re-announced your show with Dubois and Joyce for for July. But is it still difficult to tell even if that will go ahead in July, Frank? Well, we've got to, you know, at the moment we, we announced that date based upon the fact that the government said at the time it's going to take a good three weeks before everything gets back to normal. So we stuck a month on that because that said that in March. So you had March, April, May, June. So we stuck another month on the May, July to hopefully get to there. Um, I hope it does, but, uh, you know, I, I can't guarantee it, but I hope it's going to be the case. Mm. But uh, I think the current situation we're in at the moment, we just it's impossible to tell what's going to happen tomorrow, let alone in three weeks or three months. You, you, you've got it. I mean, the Prime Minister's it's been diagnosed with it today. I've just seen that, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, Frank, what, what do you think? I mean, obviously, we've, since last Friday, uh, the, the country's been kind of slowly but surely being kind of closed off but we're probably approaching a full lockdown, Frank, where you're not allowed you outside your house. That's probably going to come, isn't it? Well, you would think so. I mean, it depends where you are. I mean, if you're out in the country, I live out, you know, I live at, you know, my house is outside London, and I live outside London, so we're surrounded by a field, so I'm lucky enough to be able to, you know, go for a walk and, and not see anybody. But um, it depends where you are, but the most sensible thing is obviously to stay in and isolate yourself, as they say. And... Um, and you've got, to, you've got to just tough it out. Mm. It does seem like we, we keep seeing images. I mean, we saw some images the other day of the, the packed tubes and, you know, people kind of certain parts of the country where they're still out and about and they're not quite taking on board kind of how serious this potentially and is currently. Well, I think the thing with the tubes is they are obviously key workers who were supposed to go work because obviously we were on lockdown then. But the problem you got is obviously they reduced the amount of tube of, of, of trains. So if you're you're if you're reducing the amount of trains, you're still going to have packed trains because um, there are less of them obviously running. So it's a it's a sort of real um, catch twenty two situation. I mean, I don't think I'd want to be getting on a tube at the moment, but probably the people got on, who are getting on the tubes have no no option. Yeah, absolutely, you know. Obviously, the, the, the self-employment uh, situation it was, obviously, they've announced uh, new measures yesterday. But if you've, got, if you've got to go to work, Frank, to kind of put food on the table, you've got kids and etc. It's a difficult situation to be in for people, being told to stay at home, but also to kind of pay the bills as well and, and, and keep living. Very difficult times for people, you know, very, very difficult for the, you know, for the whole of the population. Um, it's been... You know, the average bloke in the street or lady in the street is, is tough time from single parents, 
they're the only breadwinners and so forth. It's you know it's, it's very difficult, and uh, all you can hope is that they're going to get enough support from the government to see them through the crisis. Mm. Um, obviously, the the Olympics have now been postponed until next year, and I know obviously there's a, a, a much larger picture going on, Frank. But for the, the you know you've obviously been around the Olympians, Frank, all the way through your your, your career, Frank, and it, it must be heartbreaking for them to kind of have that postponed until next year because a lot of them are going to have to make decisions whether to turn pro or not uh, with the Olympics not happening this year. Well, that, that's the facts of life. I mean, you know that that is it's a great it's obviously. It's a, big blow to them having said that even if they were turned professional today they still wouldn't be able to fight yeah absolutely so, you know it's, uh, it's it's a time time situation I'm, I'm sure some of them will turn over eventually turn over maybe before the olympics who knows it's just uh that everybody's in the same boat no matter what you're doing i mean i was talking to my friend neil Wall, uh who, who you know he, he was one of the uh, one of the guys from the agency, quite quite a big agency, it's called the agency, that look after a lot of bands and so forth. And they're, they're pushing tours back six months to, to a year. You know, and, and everybody's in that, but is in that boat in the entertainment industry. You know, you've got, you've got no concrete dates. And then the problem we're going to have when hopefully everything does get back to normal is being able to get the availability of the venues because everyone's going to be after the dates. Mm, absolutely. Um, it, it's quite noting, obviously, the, the pressure the NHS is on, Frank, as well. But, you know, we, we saw kind of the, the round of applause that went went around the country yesterday, which is a great acknowledgement for them. But they're, they're under immense pressure as well, uh, Frank, uh, everyone at the NHS. Well, of course they are. And, and that's why everybody's got to stay indoors because, you know, it seems to me, looking at, you know, reading, read, reading about this and the news you're hearing, it obviously has... A serious effect, so more of a serious effect on on uh, older people, and obviously people who've got underlying illnesses. So they the best that they they you know that that age group of people stay indoors and adhere to what the government's saying. Otherwise, that's going to clog up the, the NHS beds and so forth. So if they can you know keep at home, isolate themselves until hopefully um, this settles down a bit, it gives the uh, N- NHS a bit of respite and help them to to deal with. Uh, Deal with what's going on, but all I, all that's happening every day is the graphs going up with more and more people ke- and and unfortunately more people dying from it. Mm. We <laughs> we saw some kind of video images of the XL being t- turned into a, a potential like hospital or, or a place where uh, the coronavirus. Uh, people that have contracted it can be treated and Frank you know that obviously Excel because you've held events there in the past as well and that's it's quite a sight to see that being kind of transformed into that well it is and there'll be more I mean that's in London I'm sure there's going to be a, if, if, if if we get hit like Italy's been hit and you can imagine what's going to happen you'll be, they'll be doing that doing that all over the country and certainly it, more, even more in London I hope it's not going to be the case but if we get if we get half of what Italy's got, then we're going to be in serious trouble. And that's, that's why people got to listen. It's quite straightforward, isn't it? I mean, like I said, if the the prime minister common is sense. Of a, it's common sense. That's all common it's, sense, it's yeah. Common sense. Yeah, well, just coming back to what you said there, Frank, that obviously Boris Johnson announced today that, you know, after having mild symptoms that he got himself tested and uh, he's now contracted coronavirus. It's, I mean... It's, people seem to think it's only, like I said, a certain age group that are getting it, but it seems to be that that's not the case. Well, if he's got it, everybody, you, you, you've, got to, you've got to think that um, there's a good chance everybody he's been working with on this has been contaminated as well. Yeah, I mean, that's what I saw the, the, the Chancellor, um, Rishi Sanuk, um, they, they put a thing out to say that he hasn't been tested and he's not in self-isolation, which I find a bit weird that even though he's been keeping the distance, he hasn't been kind of tested. You, know, you just thought all of them should have been tested as a matter of priority. They're the ones who are supposed to, not supposed to be, they're the ones leading us and they're the ones advising us. So they need to, to get, that, that, they're very crucial into what's happening for the future for, 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 for Britain. Mm, absolutely. Um, all right, Frank, well, listen, I'm going to let you get about your day. Um, Right, mate. And your, your glass of wine. Can we end on some sort of positive message to the people, Frank? Yeah, you know, stay healthy. That's what we've got to do. Stay healthy, and we're going to have a. When we all get back into this, we're going to have a, 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 a lot of great shows, hopefully, for everyone to see and watch. Hopefully, um, 
get their mind away from from the terrible times we've been through. But the main thing is to stay safe, look after your families, and uh, and listen to what what the advice is, and that is to isolate yourself. That's the only way you're gonna we're gonna get through this. Like you said, Frank, it's common sense. Just listen, and you know this will be dealt with a lot quicker and easier. But as difficult as that is, but just listen, yeah. Well, some morons don't listen, do they? That's the unfortunate thing. And I was looking at, funny, I was looking at a thing on breakfast TV the other day. There was a bloke licking a, licking a toilet oh. in America, and some other idiot licking a load of um, bottles on a supermarket shelf. So the fella who's licking the toilet bowls apparently got the virus. Now he's in a bad way. Which you know, how do you have any sympathy for him? And the other fellow's been arrested. And what I think they should do, the fellow they've arrested, they should put him in the in the bed next to the bloke and leave him in there and just lock the door. The pair of morons, evil, wicked bastards. I know it just seems like so, the stupidity of, and, and this is what social media kind of allows us to see the stupidity of some well, people. It's incredible. It's so, it's their so-called fifteen minutes of fame, isn't it, or infamy, whatever you want to call it, in idiots. Mm, no, absolutely. Right, Frank, keep yourself well and um, hope you, you and your family are okay. And uh, we'll hopefully get another kind of little update from you next week. No problem, mate. And you and yours and all the listeners, all, all stay safe and well. Thank you very much, Frank Warren. See you, mate.